the book of Mark. Mark chapter number five. Are you here or you've gone home? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mark chapter number five. It's a wonderful thing to be in the presence of God. I want you to understand something as we get into this series. Every series, every preaching, every opportunity to hear God is a dimension we are entering. As long as you keep that in your head that I'm entering a dimension, consistently think about it. Every preaching is a dimension. So you're no longer what you used to be. Hi. The Bible says a day in the house is like what? A thousand elsewhere. What does it mean? It means any opportunity you have to come here, you are 1,000 times better than somebody. Whatever information you can collect in 1,000 days <laughs> is how better you are by just being here. Tell someone next to you, Legion. How to break from hard yokes. The book of Mark, chapter number five. You can take your seats. Viewers all over the world, this is your time. And wherever you are, it can be this moment that your deliverance will come. It can be any time. Today I feel drawn to just some people. No. I, I never said a side. Oh. Blessed be his holy name. But before we get to Mark chapter number five, I want you to get to the book of Genesis 49. And I will read from verse number 15. So that you understand what happens in the book of Mark is not a coincidence. Ah, blessed be his heart. Here it is. It says, and he saw that rest was good. Mm. And the land that it was pleasant and bowed his shoulder to bear and became a servant unto tribute. Mm. Now, look, this is, this is, Jacob prophesying to his sons. How many times have you prophesied to your own sons? Some of you, you skip the generation because the generation that is new, your father never said anything about you. As a matter of fact, your name actually means nothing. Ever heard of blind Bartimaeus? The word Bar means son of. Timaeus means nothing. So he was a blind son of nothing. And I'm not on that subject, but I just want to explain to you that in our African culture, it is easy for us to give a name, but that name means something. But some of the names are from our ancestors. They don't have to mean good. They just need to be my uncle's name. And now you find yourself following the patterns of your uncle. And you don't know why. It's because you're not you. Elijah. But Jesus said he was Elijah. He had a certain character and a certain anointing of a man who used to live there. You can repeat someone's life and you think it's you. I have not started preaching yet. But somebody is facing deliverance as I'm talking now. Whatever pattern whatever pattern has been given to you Whatever pattern has been given to you, I decree and declare that pattern is destroyed now in the name of Jesus. That pattern is destroyed now in the name of Jesus. Now hear this. Hear this. Hear this. Sit down. 
I'm going to deal with something today and then enter. And, and you will see the patterns. And the patterns will be broken today. The patterns will be broken today. In a few minutes, I'll start moving around. What we preach should be practical. Hear me well. Are you flowing? Let's go. Now, here is where we start. Just in case you were not listening. So in the book of Genesis, we find Jacob is giving prophecies to his sons. The prophecies don't need to be something that the men saw in the future. That is a very dangerous prophecy. Where I decree to you what will happen. Then somebody can come and change what will happen. Chart the course of his own life. I can literally say by this time next year, I will be so rich you can't even... Uh. Now, then somebody can say by this time next year, you will be divorced. That's a prophecy. This one also is also a prophecy. But this prophecy changes the future. Another one just tells you what will be in the future. I decree and declare to somebody here, by this time next year, you will be swimming in a level of prosperity you have never seen in your life. There will be shifts in the spirit. Sit down. So we want to do this before we get to the book of Genesis. Before we get to the book of Mark. Genesis. Now Jacob is giving a prophecy to his children. And it starts by, Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Mm. Dan shall be a serpent, by the way, an adder in the path that bited the horse heels so that his rider shall fall backward. <laughs> I stand here as a father. Yes, you shall be known throughout the nations. Hi. Parekevele katomale. Prenda la die pai kovai. You shall be known where? Throughout the nations. Listen, in the days when Dr. Kumoyi started the Deep Alive Church, Come on. they never wanted a CV from his members. Wow. If you would say, I'm from Deep Alive, they knew you were a straightforward person. Wow. You would get an employment, not based on your curriculum, vitae, wow. based on your church hey, membership. <laughs> There are levels, brother, to this thing. That way you say, you say, oh, do you have a degree? He said, no, 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 I don't. What can you do? I'm spirit embers. You shall get all what you need. All the things you need based on where you go to. Your character shall be well defined. They shall you know you as people of integrity, people of prosperity. People of connections, people who are magnetic to finances, magnetic to resources. I speak this as your father. Sit down. Let's get back to Legion. Praise the Lord. Nowadays, I, I get out of the church. Sometimes 3.30, we are finished. Sometimes 4.30. And you, you see people troubled outside. Wondering where to go. I don't want to go anywhere. One day I came back in the church and everyone was just moving around trying to figure out, is there another sermon? <laughs> so today I want to finish at two. Past, past the five. <laughs> don't run, don't run like this. Murive, don't run! <laughs> 
<laughs> now, here, <yeah>, let's go. <laughs> Are you there? <laughs> I have waited for thy salvation, O oh God. Now hear this. Verse number 19. God, hear what he says. God, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at last. Now, now, if you notice what the scriptures are saying, every prophecy Jacob did and gave to his children, you can trace the prophecy and it happened to the dot, except this one. Okay. So God is there standing there and is being told you shall be overcome by a troop. But then a troop will overcome you. But you will overcome it. Then you read from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. Not one area do you find anyone called God being attacked by a troop. So biblical text is lost and the Bible's prophecy is wrong. Until Jesus leaves Israel ah. and goes the way of Jordan. And the Bible says he came to the Gadarenes. You are not hearing what I'm talking about. He came to the Gadarenes where he found a man called Legion. But he is finding a man called Legion in the Gadarenes. And yet the prophecy of Jacob was to God. Who is the father of the Gadarenes. And, and, and notice his prophecy had already said a troop shall overcome you. And the word troop is the same word Legion. So I'm here to decree and declare. You didn't come here by chance. There was a God to be delivered. Yeah. Your prophecy might have taken ages and generations. But every good word that your ancestor received. Amen. I take a conglomeration of those prophecies. Yeah. And this day you receive it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Let your amen thunder like fire. Yeah. You are joking over there. I said let your amen thunder like fire. I don't care if your great great grandfather was promised a cow and he did not come. It is all for it is for you now. If your great grandmother was promised five years of trust me now, I by prophetic unction take a hold of that. You see. Say now, the Bible says, send words. Hey, I hey, send hey. words. Yes, do, do you understand? Say, send words. Hey, yes. Hey, yes. Hey. It is a send men. Yes. Send words. Yes. And the Bible says, he sent his word and healed them all. Yes. Send words. We are sending words. We are taking over. Send words. Yes. I said, send words. Send words. Send words. We are delivering words. Amen. We are delivering words. I said, we are sending words. Delivering words. Sit down. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. Notice. Notice. So if you look in the prophetic, it seemed as if God had already forgotten that there was a prophecy for God. And notice, if you look in the book of Mark, chapter number 5, uh, verse number 1, let's go. Uh, and they came, watch this, over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. Mm. If you search the word Gadarene, you won't find it many times because it wasn't popular. It was a very popular country, or rather location, based on demons. They discussed everywhere there is a man who is possessed by thousands of demons. Ah, imagine, 
Imagine your country being known, your, your town being known, your village being known, and everyone says it's so popular. Where are you going? Gadara. And people knew it wasn't popular because of money. There was money. They were marketers. They were business people. But it was popular because of a demon. I know what you think. I know what you think. I'm an influencer. You are popular because of your tie that is outside the dress. It's a demonic influence. That's why you are popular. I, I don't want to go deeper, but let me just say this to you. Sit down because I might have touched your dressing, but notice the Bible says, after Legion was delivered, they found him seated, dressed up. That then, trust me, that then tells me that lack of clothes is a sign of demonic possession. All these breasts you are actually showing off with. That's baby food. All these legs you are showing off. That's means of transport. Eyebrows up to here. Eight centimeters of eyebrows. If you blink too quickly, you might fly. Sit down. Sit down, sit down. Let me go this side. They're, they're, they're not getting me at all. I told you, I'm here for a short service. Sit down. So why men are looking for you? Listen to me. Listen to me. I was in one place with my wife and, and his, there's, we, 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 we had this acquaintance of ours and we visited the man. And then this lady came in and she was like, not a beautiful lady. She was, the Bible actually says Sarah was fair to look upon. That means according to the Bible, it is fair to say some people are ugly, some people are beautiful. I didn't study the Bible. And she entered in and said, I don't know, prophet, I, I don't know. It's just, men just love me. <laughs> she acted as if that was a prayer request. Men just give me attention. I, I don't know why. Then our acquaintance began to cut the scriptures and cut the scriptures and trying to throw at that girl. And, and she just wanted them to know uh, that, you know, I'm all that plus a bag of chips. <laughs> so by prophetic unction, I figured out that wasn't a question. I said, sister, do you know where many house flies are? Pope is there. Uh, I know you're not hearing what I'm saying. I didn't wake up thinking to, to throw violence all of a sudden, but I, I came to explain to you. There is no need. Look at what the scriptures say in the book of Revelation. It says that woman Jezebel, who you allow to preach. So Jezebel is not in the world. He's in the church. <laughs> you are not hearing what I'm saying now. And I know you are not hearing me. So you can be sitting here 
and yet there is an action from the enemy. Let me show you something. I want to show you something. Let's go. Let's go to our scriptures. And I'll play around this location here. Why are you jumping? I said this one. Right. Hear, hear me, hear me. Anyone who has come out of the ship, uh-huh. immediately then met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. Uh-huh. Oh. Who had his dwelling among the tombs. No man could bind him. No, not with chains. Do you understand that sometimes chain breaking is an anointing? Oh. Oh. This demon was not chained. (laughs) He had already broken the chains, but he was not free. I I know, I told you I need to be here. That he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. You couldn't talk to him. You couldn't tell him anything. And always night and day, he was in the mountains, in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him. Notice, I want you to look, Mark chapter number 4, the last verse. Watch, watch. The demon sees, hear me well. The demon sees, the demon sees Jesus. It runs to him, kneels down to worship him. The disciples feared exceedingly and said one to another, what men of men, are, of men is this? The disciples don't know him. The demons know him. I knew, I knew I got to the wrong direction. It is possible that in this day where we are talking about legion and we are talking about breaking free from hard yokes, that the reason why you are under attack, even though nobody has prophesied about you, nobody has given you a prophetic word, the demons know who you are more than you, more than your pastor, more than your preacher, more than the deacon. You are under attack not because you are useless. Because there is something about you that the devil is trying to prevent from coming out. The reason why you have failed marriage after marriage after marriage after marriage is because the devil knows if he succeeds, if she succeeds, I'm under. The reason that money has not come yet might be because the devil knows the moment you get a hold of it. 20 churches, nations would would be built by you. But that was until I came with a message from God. And we are going to go deeper. Amen. Sit down. Sit down. Let's go to scriptures. <laughs> Are you seeing it? And he cried out with a loud voice and said, No, no, we were still Mark 4. I want to show you. What manner of men is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. They are struggling because what they need is a Messiah. And according to them, a Messiah is there for political reasons to remove Rome. Ah. This is why one of the mothers came and said, when you come to your power, put my son on your right and one on your left. Because they were thinking of political power. But Jesus knew he would come as a Messiah spiritually and then come physically. That's why they called him son of David. Have mess on me. Why? They knew if we say son of David, we are commanding the king to come down and restore. 
So that's why Jesus turns. He said, this one recognizes that the throne of David is mine. I want to show you. Persona mer farida le gangas. Verutaliam. And I feared exceedingly and said one to another, What man of men is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The disciples are wondering, What, what did we get ourselves into? Yes. This rabbi seems to do some few things here. Uh -huh. yes. but, but, but still, he is commanding the wind. Can't he command Rome to leave? Oh, hey. yeah, that's what. Here we go. Chapter number five. Are you still flowing? Yes. I told you the truth that if you come here just for two days, two Sundays, you'll be like a man who has done theology for five years. Yes. Doctorate. Yes. They said they looked at these unlearned people and they said, surely they were with Jesus. No, you did not hear me. They looked at people who were unlearned, but the way they were reasoning, their sunesity, their sagacity, their profundity. They said, surely they were with you, but angels, surely. Surely. <laughs> hey! Here we go. And he cried out with a loud voice, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, the Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God. I like this. And the devil is in trouble. When demons are in trouble, they don't call upon Satan. No, 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 no. You are not hearing me. Imagine when your master is there and you don't call upon your master to deliver you, you call upon my master. <laughs> Have you ever seen a demon come to your house and, and when, when you try to cast it out, it says, blood of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> then you know he's in trouble. The demons realize the force of Jesus and they realize we can't call upon the devil. He will not deliver them. So they called upon the father of Jesus. We adjure you by God. Mm, read it. I adjure you what? That you do what? No, no, you're not reading correctly. That you do what? Thou torment me not. I want you to see, while we are there, I want you to see something. Are you there? Are you there, somebody? Isaiah 49, 24. Isaiah 49, 24. La tagush kebendos. Fradegilia. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty? Or the lawful captive be delivered? Ay, you did not hear this. No, 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 no. You missed it. So I, I'll try by all means to go to another group. Let me preach. Let me preach to those around the world. Our partners and because these ones here don't get it. Shall the prey be taken ah, from the mighty? God is saying, is it possible to take the prey of the mighty? He says, or the lawful captives be delivered. That means the mighty have taken prey by legal reasons. So God is saying, it's impossible when the devil has legal grounds for him to just leave. Ah. I knew you were not getting this. I ministered on legal captives before, but I want you to understand that your grandfather, your mother, your father might have entered into deals with altars you never understand. That now you come in, you just want to say, in the name of Jesus, good luck. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty? Or of the lawful captives be delivered. <laughs> Let me tell you something. My father is the first one to break out of this superstition. But he broke out not as a spiritual move. No, as an intellectual. 
He said, I'm coming out. This doesn't make sense. That a young man can claim that you are my, I'm your father. And the spirit of your father is speaking through me. He said, I'm not doing that. That's nonsense. But as a what? As an intellectual. Not spiritually. So that means my family was still bound to spiritual reasons. Because he came out intellectually. So we also grew up not believing that thing intellectually. But the spirit doesn't care about intellectualism. Now, let me explain to you something. Pastor Iroko was talking about something very important. And I like to quote my brothers when they are my brothers in, in Christ and also brothers around the world that I'm well acquainted with. He was talking about something. In 1863, there was an emancipation proclamation oh, yes. made by the American government oh, yes. to free all the slaves. Mm. But the civil act right was put in 1957. Hey. Come on. Almost 100 years after they said slaves were free, yes. wow. did they start trying to enact the law? Yes. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Come on. What I'm trying to say to you is this. I'm trying to tell you, demons don't care about documents. No, 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 no. You're not hearing what I'm saying. I said you're not hearing what I'm saying. Way back there, a general had a land from here to there, land, few acres. And the government said, we only give right to this land that is a small house for a church. And that land had a few square meters. This one with acres, nothing. Then he bought another land and it became acres. They said, okay, this one is where we give rights. When they came back, the land had switched. No, no. You see? See? You see how I'm talking now? Documents. Domus don't care about what document you have. Ma'am, you can have a, a marriage certificate written nicely, beautifully written. With the judges signed. But your marriage is in tatters. That is a toilet paper. My God. Your problem is you think your degree will take you far. No. You're confused. The Bible says the rest is not to the script. Wait a minute. I thought it was. The moment you called it rest, it's now to the swift. No. The rest is not to the swift. Battle is not to the strong. So why, why is it called battle when the strong are not called for? Notice here. It says time and chance happen to them all. That means this world has managed. Hear me well. This world has managed the power of making you a commoner. 2,000 students in your degree at the university and 40 jobs. You can move around and say, yes, yes, me, I have this. <laughs> Even if they say they need somebody with a top degree, all of you will get jobs. But the 40 positions are for the money you want. All over the world, not all students get jobs. But I have a first class degree. It doesn't matter it's first class. Because in your university, you were 2,000. And the jobs maybe in that America of yours or Britain of yours are only skisty. So they've made you common. Everyone is like you. What do you have? First class degree. What do you have? First class degree. Have you noticed that they don't ask what were the scores? <laughs> Why? You have been made common. That means you need some flavor, brother. You need a spice. Hey! You need something to spice up your life. Malekosa Praktela Kastanda. 
Tropo chopo choplia. Rizi zojiki. Agaku shamola. Sit down. Who do you think you are? If you stand there with your beautiful face, a new one is coming. One of my daughters in Britain there, we flew to America with Prophet Bushiri. As we're walking in the streets, we see this lady. She said, I'm now part of your church. Wow. And somebody in my team said, I was with Pastor Ricky here. And someone said, in my church said, you know what? Mm. This lady used to be this big slay queen. Mm. Mm. She's now your daughter. I said, bring this slay queen to me. I stood with her and she started telling me how she has gotten houses now. She's gotten two houses. Don't have, don't develop some ideas. <laughs> then I said, you know what? In one year's time, you will not be popular. That's right, sir. I said, this is not a, a hex. No, you will not be popular. So better remove this slay queen issue. Focus. If you had two houses, good for you. Now figure out how this can give you more money. It didn't take a year. In seven months, her own young sister had taken over the job. Yes, yes, sir. Not somebody else, his sister. She was still saying, I, I, I believe in God. <laughs> Have you ever seen the Nigerian movie? I like Nigerians. If you find a serious one, they'll be serious. If you find a fake one, 100%. I saw this movie where said, Hey, can you know? Talking to, to a God at a shrine. Hey, get you know, answer me in the name of Jesus. <laughs> That's being serious on both sides. <laughs> like you are not answering me in the name of Jesus. Speak to me now. <laughs> Hear me well. And I begin to explain to him how the new person will come up and replace her. I didn't want to go into the spiritual immediately because she understands a certain language. Jesus would come in with information from the world that the person would understand. If I had gone and said, spiritually, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing this, she'd be like, spiritually, we're here. <laughs> do you understand? So what I needed to do was to speak her language. They said, let me deal with you from your mindset. So you were going around all these countries with men. And now you gained a little bit of money. You went and sold whatever you were selling because you were popular a little bit. And she did some business there. Uh, whether she was selling hair or whatever she was selling. It was just right there. But it was because of some popularity. Yes. And I said, this coming year, within a year, you will not be popular. Somebody you know will be popular. And will be taking your customers. Mm. So if I were you, I stop now. Because it's not helping. That's right. Five months, six months. Mm -hmm. Her own sister had taken over the job. Yes. Now they were calling the sister to book the sister. <laughs> the product is now the pimp. Because the world has managed to get everyone to become common. And people will take over from you. And you think you need accolades in the natural? No. Remember, have you not seen some men, ugly one, ugly one, married? Have you not seen? Have you not seen an ugly woman married to the most handsome men? You wonder what happened. What did he see? No, you don't know George. He's so nice, George. Ah, 
George? Then we put George here. Oh. Ah. What is it in George that they are finding sexy? So he's so sexy, the guy. Wow. George. And George stands there, you go like, hey. And George will be wearing just one, some small short with one big one peg leading the way. And it's George. And you can't do nothing, eh? And he just gets there, gets into a car like this. You look at the car. Ah, now you understand. The world has made you come on. I, I will not stop this level until I make you feel common. <laughs> Everyone who looks into the mirror thinks if I just correct this part. Meanwhile, the office needs disfiguration and configuration. <laughs> ah, I know you now, even from here to there. You only have one area. You don't have three. One is that if I just, if my eyes just become a little bit bigger. <laughs> and God knew exactly what he was doing when he was creating you. He just left that part. You have been made a commoner. Let's go back to scripture. Yes, sir. Mark, Kando, Brett, Akovian. Legion is the scripture. Let's go, sir. Let's go. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty or of the lawful captive be delivered? That means there are things that your family got into that caused thousands of demons to congregate around you that now you are noticing a pattern in your life. One thing that never drops. No one gets married. And if you get married, you divorce. Your own mother did not finish nothing. If it's fighting with your husband, you know your mother, what she used to do to your father. Anytime you notice patterns, that means there is a legion in control of your family. You don't know why your marriage is not working. You never studied the legion that was in your mother. So now this husband of yours is suffering because of what you got as an inheritance from your mother. You don't know how to treat a woman. Why? Because your father was a draconian ruler. There was no romance in him. If you have a car, you'll be the first one in your family to drive one. It's a pattern. You get into a car, accident. You get into another one, accident. You get into another one, accident. Just a few days ago, I met a man just up there. He had gotten into an accident with seven cars this year. Seven. Seven. Does he have the money? Yes. But where is the money going? wrong. He will use 20,000 for this car, 40 for this one, 200,000 for this one, and they all go. All I want to do is finish his 2 million. And sometimes it's your family members. All your family, you get the nicest job, but your family member, someone will be fired from work. Then your uncle gets sick. Have you noticed that when you get $2,000 that day, the same day you say, oh, 2,000 is now in my account. That's the same day they need a bill that they forgot to send you. Arise. And guess how much it would be? $2,005. I know you, they're not hearing me, so I'll go here. Why? There is a pattern you should notice. And anytime you notice a pattern, you now know there is a legion in my family. It's a continuous thing. And now I'm known because of a legion. 
Hallelujah. Oh. Do you know that family? Ah, ma ure gega. Do you know that family? Oh, all of them are prostitutes. Notice, your condition has taken over your name. Who is that one? Ah, that prostitute from next door. You have a name. They know it, but they will not use it. But after a year, two years, three years, no one knows your name except prostitute. Everywhere you go as a man, you steal. You are a thief. To the point when you walk and say, he's coming, he's coming, please, please, hide your wallet. So, no, he's coming. And you arrive, they are so nice to you. They are nice. We're like, oh, my brother, how are you? <laughs> and they know you're a thief. What has happened? A legion is in control of you. And guess what? Anything to restrain you, you break free. That's what the Bible says, casting off restraint. You can't be controlled. We can't tell you what to do. You will change. All failure to perform duties can be demonic. You can be in any department. It might be ushering, protocol, media. If we keep telling you the same thing, you are failing to be straight, put in a strict restraint. You don't go this way. This is where you go. Breaking off from the prescribed order. Relax. <laughs> cool down. <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever noticed people were like, ah, now nah, he's here. <laughs> I think I'm describing someone who is here. <laughs> let's go, let's go. I want to show you something. Can the lawful captives be delivered? Let's go. But thus says the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. Matapale. Notice what they are called. The prey of the terrible. That means these who are taking you hostage are terrible. They are not merciful. They kill children in order to get you. There are people who have lost children. Just so that they, they will eat their own child so that they kill you. Have you noticed a person who is so dedicated? In the time of Apostle Paul, they bound themselves with a, with a law and oath. We will not eat <sighs> or sleep or do anything until Paul dies. <laughs> Meanwhile, you are in your house, you wake up and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, bless today. Amen. <laughs> ah. So we are prayerful. Today I spoke to God. You, <laughs> you, you spoke to who? <laughs> the same God who says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and praise. You, these two minutes you did, you think that... This is not microwave God. No. Just entering his gates requires you to give him thanks and praise him. But thank you so much. Thank you so much for waking up, for waking me up. Thank you. Thank you. I know you are protecting me. Amen. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, as if it's not, you know, those who are spiritual go deeper now. Say shikarava, shikarava, shikara. Because if you don't put tongues in there, it's not worth it. And some of you think you will survive by saying a prayer. Saying a prayer in the shower. Yeah. I can see it. I can see it now. I can see it now. Naked. The Bible says the apostle saw Jesus at the bank of the river. Saw Jesus. And they said, who is that? They said, it's Jesus. He took his coat. Wore it. Went in the water. Swim to the master. He knew. I can't approach Jesus naked. <laughs> I 
did not say don't pray in your shower. But don't let it be your main prayer. It should be just a top up. You did not hear me, so let me go that side. That cannot be your main prayer. In the shower with all soap everywhere. Have a certain level of decorum. I know Christians will be like, so, so we don't pray when we're in the shower, huh? So we can't pray when we're naked, when we're born naked. Walk around naked now. <laughs> David wore a linen effort. Mm. Antawe, linen. It's mm. written in there. And then he danced. Yes, but also David danced until he removed his clothes. No problem. Are you David? <laughs> it's the same thing I hear many people say, I'm, on, I'm doing, I'm on a 40-day fasting. Shut up. 40-day fasting, my foot. 40-day fasting. Then the Bible says, and the man, when he was going, an angel met him and gave him a cake. And the Bible says, he went on the strength of the cake. For 40 days. Now you have not one cake you ate. Right. Yeah. A bishop in Zambia died on the 23rd day of fasting. Wow. Autops. His intestines twisted. Hunger. If you get hungry while it's your fasting, eat. <laughs> we heard you guys. The Bible says, after Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards, he became enhungered. If you get hungry, while is your fasting? You're not fasting. It's a diet. You should be so occupied, you forget. Yes, yes, sir. So occupied with God, but you don't get so occupied with God. You'll be thinking, some of you will sleep during Rosh Hashanah. You, you, you sleep. You wake up 2 p.m. Say, so I was fasting. Ah! <laughs> I, I caught a trick here. Yeah. I will not point who. I know you. The days of our 12 days fasting, people wake up at 1. So your fasting is only 3 hours. <laughs> And you have the audacity to say, yes, sir. You know, things are going to work now. I fasted. You did not. Let's go. I want to show you something. Shall the lawful captives be delivered? Prophet in the gears of him. Taken away. Now watch this. Now watch this. And the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. The people are called terrible. Says the wicked ones are born wicked from their birth. They speak lies as soon as they are dropped. <laughs> ah, are you, have you ever thought about this? That the Bible says the wicked people are born wicked. That also means your child. Because I know when you think, you think of other people's children. <laughs> Even you. You are born wicked. One, two, three. Let, let's read that. Aye. From, from the day, you'll be like, oh, pumpkin. Oh. And they are wicked. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder and stops the ear. I Meaning, he said, they don't listen. No matter what we will try to do to them, no matter what we say, they will not listen. And here you are here. And you are wondering, why is it that there is a pattern in my family? Why is it things are not working in my family? Why don't I get a job? If I get a job, it will be just a job that I don't like, I don't enjoy, but I have to keep it because I have nothing to do. Listen, you, your, your salary is $1,000, your rent is $700. And your bills are 400. 
The only thing you are left with after that is overtime selling your flesh. I don't know if you understand. Are you understanding this? Let's go back. Parateke. Are you getting this? Hear this. I like what the Lord says here before I continue. For I will contend with him that contendeth with thee. I, I will contend. Imagine, he says don't contend with him. I, God, will fight those who fight. This service here, by the power of the almighty God, the Lord by his hand shall contend with those that contend with you. You will not die. You will survive. You will not be defeated. Your life will take another shape. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your amen be resounding. 